One walked over my grave, awakening me. Now that is a billboard. Just look at how old and creepy this sign looks. For Pierce Brothers Valhalla Cemetery, Mortuary and Flower Shop. Victory at Kawanga. Now for today's grim adventure, we're going inside this cemetery. Of course, over time, they updated their signage, but this one here for some reason still stands. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a man by the name of Charles Criswell. You may know him as the Great Criswell or Criswell Predicts. Now if that still doesn't ring a bell, remember the movie Plan 9 from Outer Space? Greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. He was the guy who narrated that movie. It can also be seen at the beginning and the end of Plan 9 from Outer Space. And if for some reason that still doesn't ring a bell, Tim Burton's movie Ed Wood, Criswell, was played by a man by the name of Jeffrey Jones. Greetings, my friend. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, unexplainable that is why you are here today we're visiting his final resting place at that cemetery near the Burbank Airport I am Criswell. For years I have told the almost unbelievable, related the unreal, and showed it to be more than a fact. Now I tell a tale of the threshold people, so astounding that some of you may faint. In comparison to some of the other cemeteries in Los Angeles, Pierce Brothers Valhalla Cemetery really isn't that big, but it's the only cemetery in the country, and I think even the world, that has a replica of a space shuttle in it. Now, of course, this is not a life-size replica, but it's still really cool to see it up close and in person, right? Now, it's part of this shrine to aviation called Portal of the Folded Wings. It's one of the entrances into Pierce Brothers Valhalla Cemetery. It's a beautiful building. Look at that. Since the gates to the portal of the folded wings, Shrine to Aviation is open. Gotta go inside. This building is just beautiful. Now, before we make our way through the rest of the cemetery, the director, Tim Burton, you know him, I know him, uh, Beetlejuice, Ed Wood, Edward Scissorhands, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Big Fish, he actually grew up here in Burbank, not too far from where this cemetery is. A couple weeks ago, we actually did a video on his childhood home, and in interviews, In interviews, he has said that growing up, he would often walk down the street a couple blocks and spend his evening, spend his playtime playing in a cemetery. This is that cemetery. 
Now, probably the most famous resident here at Pierce Brothers Valhalla Cemetery when it comes to all things grim and all things spooky is the final resting place of an actor by the name of Ken Weatherwax. Now, Ken Weatherwax, he was Pugsley Adams in the original TV show, The Adams Family, and his final resting place is right over here. Let me crouch down so you can see it. Here we go. Ken Weatherwax, 1955 to 2014. Pretty wild, right? A couple months ago, we were actually in the cemetery doing a video on the graves of the Adams family. Well, those who were buried or interred here in Los Angeles, like Ken Weatherwax, Pugsley Adams. Lurch, however, he's actually not in a cemetery. His ashes, his family buried him in the backyard of where he lived. And whenever the family moved, they left him there. Don't know why they did that. They never went back to him. Well, in that video, I went to the house and I stood outside and I pointed the camera at the house and I started talking about what's in the backyard. And the, the lady who lives there now, she came out, she was not happy <laughs> about what I was doing. If you wanna see that video, the link is in the description below. A couple of weeks ago, we visited the final resting place of Stan Laurel, of Laurel and Hardy comedy fame. Well, here's the marker for the final resting place of Oliver Hardy, 1892 to 1957, a genius of comedy. His talent brought joy and laughter to all the world, placed by the Sons of the Desert in 1977. And I guess just recently, it was Oliver Hardy's birthday because there's some flowers here with this nice little like picture. Happy birthday, Ollie, way out west from the Sons of the Desert. That's nice. And there's the actual marker. Oliver N. Hardy, beloved husband, 1892 to 1957. Wow. Something else, right? Charles Criswell's final resting place is pretty much right at the beginning of the cemetery in this mausoleum in the remembrance section. Now he died October 4th, 1982 at the age of 75 from a heart attack. Now from here on out, I'm gonna call him Criswell Predicts because well, that was the name of his TV show and his column and as well as some of the books that he wrote. Now, if you don't know anything about Criswell, you're in luck because I'm gonna tell you, he was a very, very interesting man. You see, he was a psychic here in Hollywood in the Los Angeles area who was notorious for getting everything absolutely wrong. And all of his predictions, his psychic <laughs> visions into the future were so outlandish. When you hear them, you're gonna be like, wait, what? People actually believe this? Now, before I go any further, his ashes are right here. A little marker that says Criswell predicts Charles Criswell King, 1907 to 1982. Again, October 4th, 1982 at the age of 75. Pretty wild, right? This is, this is the, the kind of Hollywood history that I, I absolutely love. Now let me set the record straight. Charles Criswell never once claimed to be a real psychic. In fact, he was a bit of a Hollywood weirdo who was rumored to sleep in coffins. He dressed a little weird, did his hair a little weird, and he even talked a little weird. Remember, Criswell predicts. I like saying that. Now, even though he never claimed to be a psychic, a lot of people believed that he was, including two of his best friends. One was Vampira. The second one was a very famous Hollywood starlet by the name of Mae West. Now, Mae West and Charles Criswell, they were so close that Mae West would often cook him warm food, dinners, deliver it to his house, invite him over for parties. Every time that she went to a party, Criswell was pretty much there with her. Whenever she would buy a new car, all of her expensive cars, she would sell them to Criswell for $5. Again, just rumors. Now here's the crazy thing. His predictions, he made a lot of them. 
And as far as I can tell, he pretty much only got one right, and it was very vague, but it wasn't. But before we get into that, he did make a prediction with his friend, Mae West. You see, Mae West, Hollywood starlet, he told her a prediction that one day she was going to become president of the United States. And when she does that, her, him, and Liberace's son, not Liberace, Liberace's son, are going to get into a rocket ship and blast off to the moon. Now, over the years, Criswell definitely made some pretty out there predictions, including mass cannibalism, the end of the world, which was supposed to happen on August 18th, 1999. We're still here, so that didn't happen. But in one of the strangest ones, he predicted that at some point before the year 2000, a space ray was going to come from outer space and hit Denver, Colorado, and basically turn the characteristics of everything that was metal into rubber. And pretty much only amusement parks would be affected. Now, if you got the time, I highly encourage you to go online, watch some Criswell videos on YouTube, track down one of his books and read his predictions. It'll blow your mind. There's a lot of them. Now, through every single one that he's got bad, there's actually one that he kind of got right. And he predicted in 1963 that President John F. Kennedy would not run for re-election in 1964 because something was going to happen to him in the month of November. He got that one right. Well, speaking of trivia, here's something that I always found very interesting. Criswell actually wrote and sung a song called Someone Walked Over My Grave. Now, obviously, you can't walk over his grave. You can stand in front of his final resting place and pay your respects. But Someone Walked Over My Grave, a song. Walked over my grave, awakening me. Awakening me and bring me back to reality. I walk down a place that is filled with misery. Caused by men in search of their sinful destiny. Friends I've known and family I've loved will have to answer to me for they let someone walk over my grave awakening I'm going to be honest with you guys. There are so many famous graves here in Los Angeles that it kind of makes my head spin. I don't think I'm going to be able to hit every single one of them in my lifetime. Of course, I'm going to try. The hardest part is trying to track down which ones I want to visit first. Criswell, he was high on my list. <sighs> oh man, Criswell predicts. You kind of get that feeling whenever I do the hand gestures now, don't you? And with that being said, from Pierce Brothers Valhalla Cemetery in Burbank, California. Criswell's final resting place. Again, Criswell predicts. I love saying that. Thank you for joining us on another grim adventure. And as always, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, bad luck is coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck is dead in state. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way.